working on is just a, a little bit about how we play. Um, now, I learned from an incredible soccer coach who was a youth coach at Arsenal for 18 years. And, um, that system of play at the time was in a 4-4-2. Uh, you'll read all those different articles about what games to play, what's better, what's worse, all these different things. I, um, I think people are missing the point when they're arguing over what the best system is and everything. Okay? But what I truly believe is you figure out what works for you and then get really good at it. Okay? Now, uh, we talked earlier that I like to be a little bit different, so if the whole country was coaching 4 4 2, that would probably be coaching a 4 3 3 or whatever like that. You know, you want to do things slightly differently than other people. But please don't think it's just old, antiquated English stuff. If you watch TV, no matter what ridiculous numbers they put up for all nations, you'll see all of the same principles that are pretty much clear cut throughout. And the shapes are very, very similar. Even when you have teams playing the back three now, one of the wing backs up here that came the back four, the other wing back to one. You can do it that time, time, they shift around, and it still ends up being two backs and four a lot of the time. You know? And so the way we play is out of that shape. Um, when we're attacking, is that coming too close to the feet? Is that it? When I was on stage with you two the other night, and there's no problem. So. Thank you. Blame the Scots. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, I have no idea what I'm talking about there. Anyway, but as, as we play from that, if you look at the shape we play from that, no matter what system you're playing, the ideas from this is for you to say, okay, hopefully that looks cool. Um, this is how they're practicing. Maybe we can do some of those similar things. Um, but the idea of the coach is to figure out what you're going to do and then practice it. Practice it, really, really good. Okay? Now, this is kind of real online, okay? some of the really cool and fun, certainly when the younger age is, the more fun it is, and that's really important. So, can you do fun and get things that are going to translate into the game? I sent this group inside, I know we've got a bit of group here, so I'll, I'll repeat it, try to be redundant. Um, but if you, if you look at other sport, if you go out to the, 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 the football field, before a game, the quarterback is practicing throwing, the wide receivers are practicing catching, kicking, kicking. I won't crack the same joke about the linebackers, depth, and the whole new camp. But in soccer, suddenly, somehow or other, we figure out all these training methods that don't really practice some of the most important skills. If you practice passing standing still, you are going to get really, really good at practicing passing standing still. Now I get it, when you're six years old, you can get someone to stand still, let us go. Good luck, I know, it's that hard work, okay? But as we get older and older, what we want you to do, and what we try and do, is we look at the game, we say, what's the end picture that we want? And then we, we put that on video, we steal from all different people, and then we practice that way. And we break the game down in a way, so what we're going to be doing here today, is we're going to be doing patterns to goal, where we're saying, this is how we're going to try and play. And that ties into our job descriptions of our players. The full-backs are going to be making five different passes today. So when he gets the ball in the game, he knows he's got a menu of five different passes. And he should be able to guarantee that his wide appeal is here, his center appeal is there. And it's just up to him to make the best decision. And if he keeps his people in the same situation, he's going to get the whole thing with the brain shape up in the so all they're doing right now, um, they're just warming up, and, and a nice lively thing to do, look at that, we do massive punishment on that program, one push up and you lose it, okay? Anybody who's yawns while I'm talking, one push up, because if you're yawning while you're training, you're going to affect somebody else, okay? Are we all good with that? That's pathetic. All we do here, guys, instruction here on the 15 yard passes, not 5 yards, not 3 yards, 15 yard passes, because that's kind of how we beat, we play with some of it in the open out. And you have to ask the ball, first person to get 5 passes wins. Simple as that. Now, this is the diet, this will be the only non directional card of the day. And all we're doing, they're nervous, they're wondering what they're going to be doing. Let's get them talking. Is that me? 
Okay. We want them talking. That's really loud. Okay. Um, and we want them to be asking for the ball. I just, even when you're doing that, look, when you receive the ball, can you show to the ball and then come across you and take it away? Can you look to go away and come to the ball? All different touches on the ball. So you can do this time and time again. I just create different things all the time. You know? I would even work our way up where we're doing this in a hat, where we're catching the ball, so it's just volleying all around. And then you take a legal touch. Before you... Guys, what's illegal? Anybody? Help me out. It's an incorrect score. No failure. What's illegal? What's that? If you're taking the ball out of the air, you're first catching it. And you then, instead of catching it, you've got to take a legal touch. What is illegal? What's that? Hand? No, a sick bird. Guys, it took me about 10 minutes to get the joke down. I'm going to leave if you don't like it. Illegal? No? Can you hear me talk here? It's just a shit joke. Okay, fair enough. Right, we'll carry on. So, the boys should be getting ready now then. Charles, is he be good? Okay, let's space them out then with the first group then. What we're going to do, we're going to work the right side and the left side to go through a bunch of different patterns. Okay? Um, and so, this is a new group, so let's, uh, before they start, can we give them a bit of inspiration? It's a great group of guys, they're going to be out here, front and centre. You guys get to criticise them. They're doing it, they're the real people. So let's give them a big round of applause and a cheer for the time of our okay, good. And if I can, in case I forget at the end, you guys all know what a team game it is. Can we give a big round of applause for our assistants? That's Ogie Kennedy over there, Izzy Aldi there, and Charles Rodriguez there. Now some of you won't have assistants in your teams, but get, get a team parent to help check you know? Definitely, it's always helpful with that sort of stuff. So the, the first part we're doing, so guys, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah? You can hear me from here, so all right, okay. So I'm used to shouting for a living, so all we're going to start off with, in games quite often we're going to bounce a centre midfielder, just take a touch, centre back, right centre back, and just bounce into the ball and he'll play it back. There you go. Nice shot, just take a touch, come to the ball though, so you can have a guy marking you, okay? And then you're going to control it, open up your body, okay? And all we're doing there, we're just looking to play the right back. Let's move that flag here first. Let's bring that flag all the way into here first, okay? There you go. Do the same on that side, guys. Just right now, we're building and we're just going to be able to play around a team. You're going to stay away there, you're going to look to control the ball. The centre midfielder, you're going to show to the right back and ask for it. Don't get right on top of his dog, though, okay? You're asking, he's ignoring you. Playing the ball. You're going to take a touch, draw your man, play a little short fighting ball here, just hold it up. You're going to take that touch, and I want you to try to hold, hold your run. If you get past that line, you're upside, okay? So we want those penetrating balls going through as you're sprinting onto it. And we've got two strikers there. You guys will do your finishing sessions with the different attacking runs in the box. So we're not going to talk about that as much, but notice the training session, everything we're trying to do is finishing with a shot and attempting to drop. That's what the game's about. If you do session after session with just the ball, and I know it's tough when you're onto the practice field and have goals. Let's face it, the game is about trying to score goals. So that's what we're going to be trying to do. That's why we have a direction here. So okay. Let's just see how we do then, just we'll go left side first, and off you go, left side, let's get going. Okay, touch, play it back to him, open the ball out, let's get that full back back in a way easy, okay? And then the wide midfielder check in too, take a touch, play him, now drive and slip him, and play him, good. Let's get the right side going, Chuck, each time, yeah? How we going? Now coaches, can we get them starting a bit now and having to open out? Touch, play him, take a touch, come to the ball, come to the ball. Touch, and play him in, play him in, play him in, quick, 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 quick. Okay. Well, it's a simple building. Now, if you're coaching under 10s, rather than standing, passing, facing each other, can you get them to pass around a square? That way, when they're doing it, it's a centre-back, pass to a full-back, pass to a wide-mid, pass to a centre-back. 
and we're just learning to control the ball across our body because that's what we're going to have to do in the game. Remember, if we face each other all the time, we're just practicing one skill. You keep going. You know, should be a ball going every time. Let's go. Touch. Open out. Good. Now show, show, show. Sharp. There you go. Good. Okay. Let's let them feel comfortable with this to begin with. As we're talking, so all the different coaching points are going to be there. I'm not going to get through everything. You think a centre back is looking. He's going to be drawing his midfielder out of his field so he's not in a defensive blanket. He's going to open the ball out. The fullback backs away from the game and he's controlling. This player here, this is quite a big distance. Can he be a little bit more aggressive? He's backing away first. Let's bring this here a little bit. Let's go, off you go. There you go, touch, play it, drive. Him and slip him in there. there you go, good, good ball, good. That's a great ball, fantastic. So a round of applause, that looked quite sharp there, didn't it? Good, okay, and again, yep. And I think you're going to win the ball from defensive shape, so we want everybody to start more compact, and then the back away from the game. See, uh, you guys watch, um, watch good soccer stuff on TV. You guys ever YouTube Monday Night Football? Okay, from, from England, you guys see that? Not, not the one with the fat guys on the in American football, the Monday Night Football. Sorry, I'm looking correct now. I'm correct now. Okay. But if, if you watch that, you even got Thierry Henry talking about when he was at Barcelona, the position he had to take up and how he back it away from the ball. It's really good stuff, okay? Good, and we finish. That's a great dummy. There you go, good. Okay. So that's just a simple pattern there, just open it out, okay? Yeah, and we'll hold now. Now we're going to look at the overlap back of this one. Let's see. Now what we're looking at doing is, can they break the line at pace? We think about this, when we play the ball backwards, we can slow the game down as much as we want. The speed of play thing really matters when you get into the final third and you've got to make an attacking run. Okay? So as you're doing it, can you emphasize that speed of movement breaking the line? Okay? So now then we're going to look at just working with the overlap here. So now you fullbacks you can get your work out in now, okay? In our shape, we expect our fullbacks to be able to attack. So don't, don't be kind of slack. Step up to the cone. There you go. Step up and then you can get back away a little bit. Okay. Right. And so now, now what will happen is you'll play him, purposely play him a little bit shorter, right? So that way he'll want to come to the get around and you want to be shouting oh you want to be shouting oh okay? how we do okay yep let's go and Charles is going to get the other side going as well that's it again another ball yep touch and play him short now shout hold get on the face forward just be patient go 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 chase him keep going keep going good Wonderful. Okay, let's do the left side now as well. So here you think your wide midfielders, you want them to put their foot on the ball, and so long as they face them, they've got it. The player sees the overlapping run, he cannot do anything about it. If he's too aggressive, you just cut inside if he looks to block off the back. There you go, good. And here's the thing, what I'd be saying my full back, after he's made that beautiful pass, can he back up play and can he become in the underlap? Side at the top of the box, or we'll play back as well. Let's see. Good. Shout, hold, 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 hold. Now! Now you back up, back up, back up. You want to score as well. Right, that's okay. So here's another thing, guys. As we're making passes, long rather than short, hard rather than soft, okay? If that centre back gives a way of throwing, I don't care. If you play it short and get countered, we're in trouble. Okay? Also, with the speed of play as you shift the ball out, if you take the safe pass that gets there nicely six times, the opponent can shift across easily. Okay? I'd much rather than give away two throw in and shift the ball quickly enough to get an attack in. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah? So, allow them to take this. You're playing the through ball. If you overhit it, you give them away a goal kick. We're fine. Get back in. We're actually really good at defending goal. Okay? 
But if you play it short, you can counter attack. So everything, can you hit them, can you over hit it, can you err on that side, it's just sensible, you know? Okay. Now this right side, now, when you hold the ball up, can you link with the center midi, and we allow the third man, you're still going to do the overlapping run right back. Can you hear me? You're still doing the overlapping run. Now you can use the center midi and you're going to link up with it. Okay, off we go then, let's see. Now it's still the overlapping run. Now as you come in, yeah, let's see. Just ignore me, I'm just going here. So look, I'm cutting off that one, so now he's going to be able to play the third man in there like that. And you can do the same thing with the strike. Well done, young man. Oh, okay. And again, let's see how we do with the third man over there then, guys. You just think there, the overlapping run's the obvious one. If the defender's trying to cut it off, you can use it inside and then inside to left. Izzy, can we get the center mini on it, yeah? Let's see once more this time. Sometimes for those through balls for the first time, they're the ones that play them up. Okay? Okay, on the right side, you're ready for the next one now then, okay? So now then, again, as you do these sessions, what will happen, we would put cones down in here for a wide player to start off the side and then have to back away from the game, okay? And as you do them, what happens is that you get lazy and lazy and lazy. And if you repeat things through time, people will get lazy and lazy. You have to have your standard. Keep close to them, keep on top of them, don't just stand on the sidelines, talk to the body. Okay? So now we're looking at, just a little in back through here. Now, with those, those other ones there, we're playing a fullback, and he's able to play outside of their wide midfield. Right? I would have been here pressing him, and he's chosen the outside of okay? Now we're looking at, you come closer to the ball, scoop this way a bit more now. Let's have the wide middies drop a little bit more. I'm going to hit the next leg. Okay? So the striker, you're dropping in front of that defender, comes to stay connected with it, there you go, and you're looking towards the ball. Okay? You've got to come to it. Can you punch past the ball now? Or you need to flip it in to it in for some Right? Okay. You're showing the screen from the ball. This is your arm. Spinning on that. Spinning for the ball. Spinning. And go in, back. Break the line of pace. Don't be off sideways. Okay? Have we got it, guys? Off we go then, yeah? Let's just see. Touch. Show, show, show. Ask it, ask it, ask it, yes. Miss him out. That's it, again. And come two, come two. Good. That's it. Clean up, guys. Let's still play wide. Good. We're still breaking that line. Good. And again. Let's go again, guys. Let's go. Come on, Izzy. Get him going. You may hear me on that side, Izzy. Barely, okay. That's it, good. Listen through, good. Set and hit. Now that striker has been a set pass that's been biting that first time through ball, yeah? So the speed of it, it can be slow here, it can be slow held up, and then back, back. Come through, yeah? Go, touch. So you can get it now. Good. That was a good pack, you just got well done, good. Excellent. This is a good ball to play the cross there. Good. Well done. Okay, good. Now the right side. I want you to play either the wide or the other center midi, and they're going to bounce it back to you, and then you're going to do the same pass as before. So it's an in, back, in, back, through. Good. Up we go, yep. Just 
play someone and invite them short. Invite them short to soft pass. There you go. Set. Now hit it. Don't hit me. Good. Good. Set. Good. And play it through the line. Through the line. Good. 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 Listen, we're not talking about what's inside the box. We should be doing those sessions all the time. Ogie's talking to them about trying to make the right runs in there, making one run for the defender, one run for you, timing and getting onto it. Let's just see how it does. One more here then, yeah. A little set, there you go, good. Touch. Feet, punch. That's a good ball, well done. Good, good. Feet it up as well, yeah. Okay, good. Now the right side then. And what we do is we start going through patterns. Do these and we'll give each of those patterns to one of our guys. They're in charge of that pattern. Pull back and in charge of the first one, you know? And then we can try and give them the rules, okay? Love, you know, like this is the in and out, okay? Slow to the line, slow to the change, okay? So now, I just moved it out. That's okay. So now, the winner's coming onto him a little bit tighter. So now you're playing into him, then out. And then if you go in and out again, we can have a double double. There you go. Off you go, off you go, go on! That's it. You don't have to hit first time balls, sometimes dribble, play different pass, play the center mini as well, okay? What we would be doing with our players, we're going to vary all the different types of finishes. Is it a near post whip? Is it a far post whip? Is it a pull back? Is it the guy on the top of the box touching here, okay? Let's see again, and we can see if we can do this one touch as well. So the wide guy's pressing you, so you have to play inside. You can look at your man, and you're going to go around him by going in and out. Yep, let's see it. Take your touch. There you go. First time hook. There you go. It's difficult, yeah. And again. That's it. Play. Still in and out. There you go. You can do a double in there, guys. That's okay. Let's see the left side, guys. That's it. Just set it down. Good. There you go. So just in and out in that winger that comes out. You think in your four three threes. The winner is often super high, so that ball's off. And then the fullback might be a little bit dropped off. The gap's there to go around. Right? Does that make sense? Touch. Okay. Okay, now. So now we'll look again if the fullback's getting pressed. Okay. And we're going to go center back. You can see that I'm going to press him. But you want to give him the ball just to make me come out and pressure him, okay? So you play him a bounce pass and ask for it back. Good lad, there you go. Give yourself an out. Now take a touch forward, positive touch. We've pulled their winger out because he tried to press him. Now you can play the wide guy who comes to. Now can you, as you get the ball, face forward. And now you're looking to go at them from there, okay? So can we just see that movement a couple of times and then we'll talk about the striker movement with it, okay? Let's just see that a couple of times, yeah? Off you go right side then. Yep. That's it, give him something, control, then punch it in there, face forward. There you go, good. Okay, and then we'll be playing through, good. Let's see the left side do it as well, Izzy, let's go. So all we're looking at there, the centre back's just trying to manipulate the field. He's drawing the winger out, getting it back, then he's breaking their attacking pressure into a wide midfielder. Now, can I feel comfortable with you guys? Can I share you a little secret? Everybody okay with that? It's supposed to interact. Are we okay? Okay. Now I know no one is ever supposed to kick the ball in the air. I know I'm English. Okay, but look. The way you play has to be logical. Hold up, young man. There you go. Hold up. Okay. Marcus, you see that right foot there? Never saw that years ago. Okay. Now, I'm the fullback. You check in. Now, step into the pocket as if you receive it. Hold up. There you go. Check in. I'm getting tight on you. I'm tight on you. Where's the space for you now? Good man through your voice all the way over to here. You're a centre-back. 
Coach, I know what I'm doing, right? You gotta be able to talk, okay? Where's the space, young man? Yes! Round of applause. Okay, so look, if the fullback gets super tight, we've got two and two with the strikers. Don't get there early, just peel out. Now one of the problems with direct balls over the top is that you play on turf a lot now, it's very different to grass, it's all locked out of it. That's why we're creating crap center back, that's no story. Okay, so now, show two, you're marked, look to pass him, and I just want you to click, and then the striker will hold it up, the full back, you can be joining in now, or you can be spinning, hold it up, buddy, and play. Off we go, so bounce you, bounce your full back, exactly how we did before, ask for it back, yes, 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 take the touch, look at your wide knee, but beautiful, and we play, play, come on, play, let's go, quick, we're in. Once we've broken the line, it's got to be quick. Understand? And again, let's see the left side. Let's see if this left centre back. Charles is centre back. He got drafted by DC United, the captain of the College Cup final. He always claimed he could ping it with his left foot. I'm not so sure. I don't know if you can hear me right now. Not bad. And there. And look, I get it. We, we preach the time. Under 10, don't whack it forward to the quick kid because nobody else has developed it. I get it. Under 12, the same thing. The pitch is so huge, it's not the same sport. Once we get into 16, though, surely, if a team presses like crazy, do that. You know what's going to happen to those defenders if you kick it past them a few times? They're going to stop. And then you can pass it to your heart. Okay? Okay, so I know we kind of stepped out of your comfort zone, hit the bigger ball, so we'll get back to smaller and now to the ball, okay? Now, look at that. It's a good skill hold it up. Looks good the first thing. And now, any of the patterns you've just done, you've got to end up with the wide midfielder's feet up. Understand? Anything you've done, you've got to find the wide bit. Uh, can you wave when he's here, me? Wave! There you go. Excuse her, you. Okay. Once we get the wide, let's have a ball. Give a general pass, I'm on. There you go. What I want you to do is drive inside. Now you're still asking. You can join in. And facing forward, that means you can go. Facing the wrong way, don't. That's another thing that I think you get wrong done. You can join. You're asking because you want to pull that defensive midi away from the point, right? I'm looking. I don't know, you're showing. You miss him out. Oh, get back here, you horrible chap. Just kidding. Show for it, and I'm going to miss you out. And spin out. Okay. And again, look, if, if they don't have the picture in the head, you drive in. You know, what I want you to do is spin out. Because you moving that way is going to drag the defender. As you drive, I'm going to, hang on. Easy tiger, there you go. As I show, miss me out over my inside shoulder. Okay? And I'm going to spin out. And if it's an inviting ball, I'm spinning. If it's not, I can play it back to the body. Okay, those who are inside know the answer. Those who weren't inside, put their hands up now. There's way more of you not inside, hung over, not coming out for the first session. I'm sorry. Okay, what movement was that kind as in the, in England back in the day? Anybody? York and Cole, there you go, Cole and York, okay? Good. So, see these pictures, I saw that and I despise my game going up. I'm fortunate with a lead time, I know what you say are. But anyway, I wasn't allowed to wear red, bro. First time I wore red in my life. Stanford coach, 
and I proudly post a picture of me looking beautiful on Facebook, and my two older brothers said, you best thing to sell out whatever else, you know, okay? So there you go. Um, hey, Colin York, so you see that? The striker, I've played striker. I love that move. Working off. Okay, so we're looking at it, and she said, okay, this is one of our patterns of play. So let's see how they do. Can we just keep talking to them? Are we spinning out again? Can you drive in, play the ball? Now here's the thing. Once you play, well actually, let's see if we can do that first. Off we go. Oh, we want to get it. Yeah, there you go. Come. Good. Touch. In. Oh, I love it. Fantastic. That's it. I'm dropping. Right. Fantastic. Come on, give him a round of applause, you miserable sod. Come on. Read a book on energy. If I smile at you, you smile back. If I'm miserable, that's why coach people smile. You know? You're all happy, you're energetic. When they're training crap, it's you, not them. Remember that. Good. Touch it. There you go. Good. That's fantastic movement. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, good. Now there you go. That's a call in York. We did that. Now we can do a little bit of name dropping and bragging. We had a young man, Jordan Morris, okay? One of the other presenters actually recruited him. I was the benefactor of this evening. Pretty cool. Okay? But anyway, when he grew up, he actually played a lot of centre midfield. And um, in his first couple of years, he pretty much led the nation in rushing yards. Okay? But he would frighten people to death. But he wanted the ball so much, and at the youth level, he could get it really deep and run. So I said, look, your future's a striker. We want you to play high. We want you to work off shoulders. We want you to be shoving in, spinning in behind, using your pace to terrorize the defenders, okay? You saw he got the goal against Mexico in the Alamo Dome, which was fantastic. He was up front sniffing it out. The ball came and he buried it. And then you see the US against Germany, he shows into the ball, does the call in York. Bobby Wood gets it. I mean, Jordan's run made it easy for him, right? That's another joke. He there, he sees the run and he goes, thank you, you've just given me that yard. I'm gonna cut out of it. And then the rest is easy, like a 25 yard shot from outside the box. Okay? So if you see these things, now, you don't have to go away and do the call in York. I would advise you, I think this is a great movement. If you play with two strikers, definitely do it, okay? But go away. That's not sexy for the young guys anymore, okay? What's sexy is the people in the Premier League now, in, in the MLS or whoever else. So find those great highlights. We're going to work on that. Because if you're telling people you're passive and trying to figure out how to score, you kind of, you're getting off the hook too easy, okay? What you want to do is paint pictures. And this is a picture. We'll show them walking through it. We'll show them with how we train, rather than just passing drill. We'll do passing drill. That way they're going to think and they're going to execute. And there are a million different coaching points that I'd like to make right now. A million of them. So don't grade me as an F because I haven't brought this up, okay? I'm trying to share and show you these different things, okay? So with that now, think when he gets it to the top of the box as well, when you then become a 10, it doesn't have to go that way. The centre mini should want it back. The full back should want it back. Overlapping. The winner who plays the ball should want the ball back. Okay? And you've got all different options and it can switch out to the other flank. Right? You with me with that? Still alive? We still want energy, guys. Otherwise, I'll start talking right Okay? So, remember, I'm between you and your lunch. If you guys don't look good, I'm just going to keep you out here baking. Okay? Your fault. So now, okay, so now we're looking at similar type of position. And now we'll look at the Tevez Larente. Okay? We had a great honor of having the inventors training at Athens and That's why I took the job, guys, to learn. I already had a big ego, but now I'm a good coach, okay? But the cool thing was, I knew that I could be around great people and learn unbelievable things. So in the last few years, we had the national team training for 10 days. We had Juventus, when Antonio Conte was there. We had Liverpool with Scott. We had that terrible team, Man United, with Louis van Gaal. 
Ryan Giggs is nice to me. Look at that guy. He's looking at the time today. There you go. We won't say anything about bad about Dutch people out here, right? That's another joke. I hate the Dutch people. Okay, so, anyway, so now we're looking. Now get inside, but can you get a bit more under? Okay? Because this won't work if it's flat. Now get a bit more under, make it onto the inside foot. And now I'm going to play it and spin under it. Okay? Now. What am I doing? There you go. The two strikers, they should love each other and want to always pass to each other, but if that's not on, I'm still available. Can the fullback be joining in and be available? Okay. And can you maybe, strikers, can you play the easy pass and let him shoot and give an angle and sniff it out, but can you one time cut out of it yourself making the pass and turn on and shoot? Yeah? Off we go, guys. Yeah? Asking strikers to shoot. You see that? They love me right now. Let's see how it is. There we go. Good. Okay. Find the wide bit, then they go. Look, look. There you go. And spin under. There you go. Good. Touch and hit. Where is striker? Get the rebound. Oh, you see, he finished the drill and he was going back to his cone. No! Sniff it out. You get the headlines, you're the hero you win. Because remember, we're in a drill society. Play the game. If they just aimlessly run to a position because I've told them to, we're going to give them hassle. Why are you making that run? What are you doing? That striker sets the ball back. He should give an angle. Let's see if he gives an angle after the second. Where are you? Good. Go look at the ball. Now where are you? Good, good, good. Oh, he almost made me look really smart there, didn't he? Okay, that's good. Okay. That was Tevez Lorente working with each other, okay? So the guys know that. We work on it. Okay, and now then, we can find our way to the striker however we want. It can come from a center midi, come from a wide midi. Now we're going to look at the Rooney, okay? So now, you're on the forward line, just drop off into the pocket, first forward, and then you're going to face the gate. You can drop your shoulder and hit it, you can play him, you can play out wide, you can play whichever, okay? Just think Rooney before, you know, went back in his head, he'd just always drop off. He'd drop off the centre back and he'd make him make a decision. Are you going to come out on your own and fight me or are you going to save me back forward? Okay, let's see. Off we go, guys. Yep. Get facing, get facing. There you go. What are we doing? Yeah, yeah. Now, here's the thing. As we focus on different things, everybody else stops doing their job. What we want is everybody to do their job all the time. So you've got options, options, options. We know all the options. We've got some of our opponents here today thinking, hmm, okay, how are we going to stop that? Right? But it's like, if we know all of the options, they won't stop all of them. So it doesn't matter if they know how we play. Does that make sense? So even when it's gone there, what are you trying to do to help someone? What are you trying to do to help the living? Let's see one more of that, come on. And by the way, I will fail a coaching course today because there's way too much information. But what we're trying to do, we're trying to show you our way of playing, okay? So you drop in, get turned, get turned, good. Now what have you got? Good. There you go. See the left side? Okay, let's finish this part of it with one goal. Quickly, come on, let's go, let's go. Yeah. Right side, let's get going. Come on, score the floor. Come on. Oh, still in, play it. Dummy. Yes. Oh, hang in. Yeah, no. it. Good enough, there you go, good. Okay, let's get the guys a quick water break so they can regroup. We're going to be going as a 10 now, okay? Which way is the water? Is it over there? They're in a union, guys. I can't work them for too long. Okay, so we're just doing one-sided things there, okay? Why one-sided? Well, 
We want a ball at people's feet. If we do all as tens all the time, it's one ball between ten, that's not enough. Okay? Now, and you can tell, I know a lot of teams will start all of these patterns with their keepers. Um, feel free, you know, it's just extra touches and we're, I'm really working on this part of the game. We'll work with defenders doing their building on their own with the keeper. Uh, we'll work with our front six on their own doing that. If you can't watch the play in the warm-up, we'll be doing this stuff, okay? This is what we do. The reason why we do it is because we want to do it in the game. It's funny, one of the parents sometimes said, wow, you guys scored a goal and it like, just looked like what you're doing in the warm-up. It was interesting, on English TV, Louis van Gaal had the Man United team out doing patterns of play before the game. Um, the pundits took 30 minutes talking about how crazy that is. No, it's not. You think your brain needs to warm up just like your body, okay? And so, if you can get people doing the things, creating the picture that you want to see, it's going to help them do what you're doing again. That's why we talk about, like, the rules on direction. I really don't want my centre back shouting at Meg. Meg is involved with the outside of the foot. Okay? We ain't going to do that in the water. If he does that in the game, I'm not going to do that. Okay? So we'll, we'll go through this. We're going to get a quick drink. Tell them to keep moving, Chuck. Okay? And then now what we're going to do, we're going to go into the tent. Here's the thing as you look at each thing, if you come here and say, yeah, I've seen this man here, well done. What I'm saying is, although every time you do things, there are a thousand coaching points you can think of. Can the ball back, open up, get away from the game, and his first touch, take the ball slightly out of the body. Just to then pass it out wide, and then you can cross the body. If his first touch is too narrow, you can't get the ball to a wide touch. Unless he plays with the inside the foot, in which case, right? And also, you can get the ball there, so why we feel what we're working on with our colleagues is the time. Check away, check to it in life. Create yourself a yard by coming to the board. If you go too early and waiting there, the guy back up. The strike is different than one thing around. And then get it to the ball. Always be the Always be the ball. So what should happen, each position, the player on the ball should see something that he feels comfortable with. You know? Executing the big game is tough. You know? We all criticize everybody, but it's really difficult. You know? That ball is difficult to control. You guys know that, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I found it really good for anyway. But anyway, so can you give them things that they feel comfortable with? Can you give them a picture that they don't Why do we do imagery in the morning? It's to practice. Why do we do this training? It's to practice what we do. So if you have a trick from online, that's all well and good, but does do the players actually do it in the game? Now if you want to use that drill as a fun warm-up, awesome. Get people buzzing, awesome. Get people touching the ball, awesome. But can you get the people doing what they do? I want my centre back to be able to pass the ball for 15, 20 yards. And then of course he can do the things and things like that. Okay, I want my fullback to be able to control the ball, face forward, and make the scene. That, 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 or from the back end, I just want to know. Okay, and then all the time you can be thinking the body shape, the touches on the ball, all of those things. Those are all things that we're saying you guys can not do. So now we're working as a tank. Okay, and so what we'll look at, we're going to start working our center middies now. I did this especially for you guys when I said it's seven minutes to rotate around. I have, I have one over the four feet, right? No? Okay. okay, so now what we're looking at, pull back, you get the ball, have a look at your winger every time, because otherwise they won't open out as much, and then play a short mouth pass to your seven minutes. And again, you communicate by showing him you want it back, but also you communicate with the type of pass. If you smash it at him, try to send him away. If you play him a little bit shorter, he can play it first time or whichever, okay? And what we're going to look at with you center middies, is you're going to do a bounce pass, the midfielder would step you, and then you're going to drop off into that defensive midfield position. Center back, you'll back away from the game. Okay? Sound good? And you drop there, 
Now the second set of MIDI, if I'm in this line and I've got to decide there or not, you can decide whether you stay away or whether you make that run in here. To begin with, make that run in here so you switch it. Does that make sense? So we've got four set of MIDIs. Let's get a fourth one because they're going to be working really hard. The centre backs never do anything, do they? They have to come. That's a joke for him, not for you. Okay, off we go then, let's see. Jeff wasn't mic'd up there, he's probably cussing out. That's okay. Touch, and open out, open out. Yep, good. And turn and play. Okay, so now it's a full 10. Now, so the little coaching points there. Send a midi. Hang on, Charles. Send me. As you bounce it, you turn this way. So if you've got the ball, you're going to have to play backwards. What I want you to do, bounce it, open up your body, you can already, you're already making the decision. You're checking your shoulder a little bit to see. You checked your shoulder before, he was tight on you, yeah? So open up your body here and say, yes! You can now get it, and you can then look to open the game out, or you can play vertically, right? So play, play the defensive centre midi after his bounce, you play forward, then you can open it out and we attack. As we attack, how about a little overlapping run from the opposite fullback guys? Yep, off we go, let's see. But still, he's kind of closed his defensive midi spot already. There you go, good. Now you centre middies, be higher and engage their central midfielder with a bounce pass. Then as you move out, he then has to make decisions. Don't just go to the defensive midi to begin with, okay? Yeah? Good lad, off we go, yeah, let's see. So, be on to me, be on to me. If you control the ball, suck me in there, yeah, I'll play it. Now move, now what am I going to do, what am I going to do? Good, and you play him in there, wonderful. Go, 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 come on, go! Excellent, well done, good. Good, and again. You see, so if you're bouncing the ball, surely it's because something's on your back. Surely. Now again, can those centre middies check their shoulders? If I was in there right now in front of you guys, I probably would, because I'd be just worried about controlling the ball. But you guys can concentrate that in a second, okay? Good. So now as we're doing that, just keep doing this for a couple. Now centre middies, I want different things. It can bounce, play the defensive midi position. It can bounce, play the attacking midi position. It can bounce, play a defensive midi. Now, around and there go, back up play. Now, here's the thing. I know you guys all like to use a number system. That's fine. I prefer to just use the name because that's what they are. You know? It, it, feel free, whatever, whatever works for you, so long as you're consistent with it. That's okay. Yep, let's see. Now everybody gets coached with the numbers, so I have to tell the guys little white lies when they come to my program what position they're playing. Luckily, if you tell them they're playing that number, you can make them stand on the field wherever you want them to, so it works. Good work, there you go. Okay, and just hold it. Now here's the thing, if you go through a set, this is way too much information for one session. These guys are doing fantastic. But I would introduce just different patterns each week and it just gets ingrained, you know? And then also, as you go through this, we're now catching, the centre backs now, once they've passed it, they switch up to But in a game, they're playing it, they've got to create a new angle. They've got to drop off. So as you're coaching this, you've got to keep your eye on where the ball is and who's doing what you want them to do. But how are you backing up the game with everybody else? How are you all moving as a unit? What will happen if you don't keep on them, they're all going to stand still and they'll get more and more stretched. So we start compact, we come to play against, when we establish possession, we get bigger. 
Okay. So now, can we do this then? We're going to bounce the first centre midi, and then I want you to get it in the defensive midi position after, right? So you're going to bounce it, open up, get it, and then second centre midi, stay off them. The thing is, they're nice and compact. I've come in here, I've pressed him on the bounce, I've followed him a bit, my, my buddy's right next to me. You're staying off their shoulder. You're getting out. And then from there, I want you to play the wide midi who comes to the ball and faces forward. You get to join in, play an incredible cross, you bury it, and we'll run to the ball and celebrate, okay? Good? Yeah. Let's see how we do, yeah? Off we go then. Go. Little bounce, suck him out. Give you a new angle now. And scream. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now play it out. Do play it then. Hang on. Let's, let's stop on that one then. Sorry, guys. I know you guys are doing really well here, okay? Look, it's going to go in here. You bounce. He's going to give a new angle. Play him in this position. You stay away this time. Now, if the center minis were spread, he should go in behind them and we break the line. I'm saying now, they're nice and tight and compact, like playing against Stanford, right? Good God, yeah, thank you. Okay, stay off his shot. Just, Izzy, come be my second defender here, come over here. Stay out where you are. And you can open the ball out now. Okay, now you will then play with the wide midi who comes to, and you can do the little third man combo out wide. Does that make sense? That's a lot of information. Are we okay? Help, help them out then. I'm, I'm giving them too much information. This session is for you guys. I wouldn't coach this way. Off we go. Let's see. Okay. So bounce him and draw your centre mid out. There you go. New angle. New angle. Good. There you go. Now, find your other centre mid. He's off his shoulder. Good. Now, play the wide mid. and come to wide mid. There you go. Good. Can we combine and get through? There you go. You see it's an overlap or it can be a third man overlap there and we're getting in. Yeah, yeah. Oh! Yeah. We're going to milk success, so let's celebrate success. You know one thing that really pisses me off when I watch soccer is people who don't cheer for golf. You know? We go to some of these academy showcases, the teams, they don't even celebrate. You got to walk from field to field, you show up in a field, someone scores. You have no idea what bearing it has in the game. That's not development, that's boring. You know? So please, when we score, we See, still be buzzing, come on, still be buzzing, come on. Good college coaches here, they're going to recruit you if you move the ball well, come on. And open out, quick. And follow your path, still be involved, still be involved. Now look, it's going out, it's, I'm getting in, I'm getting in, come on, in, 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 come on, get in there, get in there, come on, get in. That's it, time your runs out, oh. Pedro, once it's been slow, it's probably going to have to be big, okay? It's an early delivery, can be behind. Now full back, what are you doing? Well, Coach, you didn't tell me to run forward. We're playing as a 10, back up play. This is another thing that we have to learn, guys. Good defending isn't staying further away from the ball. It's being absurd in hockey, you know? You stay away from the ball, that point back four stays away. Come on, centre-backs. Chuck, are you going to coach your centre-back to back up play, please, or are we going to get counter-attacked? They're, they're always the same, right? They're going to stand there, think they're all important. Good. There you go. And we've opened up. Good. Well done. Good. Now we get it under. Good. Now we're doing those different movements. Fantastic. And hit it. Go on. There's your reward. Yes! Oh, guys, you have to clap your hands every minute. Good work there, Good. Good, that's okay. Great through ball. Well done. Good. 
Good, okay. This is Los Pacinos. Where's the Los Pacinos coach? Is he still here? Where's Paul? Did you hear there's a couple of bumps on the field? Do we take care of them? Put the ground through or whatever? There's one right in the middle of the goal area. May you see as they're not moving. You see how wide guy is really wide over there right now. I would have him more connected to play, but that's just the way we play. That's good talk, it's right. The world and lovely. He's just done the room. Now I've run through. That's okay. We still play it. Dummy. Come on, take yourself. Well done. Good. Know him? Okay, you're gonna look up at my second center midi. You look to break the line. Only now he's gonna. I'm talking about. Be a bit higher, a bit higher. That winger, be looking. You look to break. I want you to get it out of your feet and look at the two strikers. Two strikers demanding it, and off you go. Can you click that ball? I would do it right footed, but I don't want to show off the front of the ground. Okay, I do it from the other side. You are? Yes, lefty. Okay, then, then just do this. Get it here. Sound good? So now what we're looking to do, we're going to drop off into there. I want wide players thrusting out wide, because you're going to occupy fullback. I want centre forwards fighting those centre backs. You can pretend over that it. Okay, engage them a little bit higher, okay? And you're making that run through, he's going to clip a perfect ball, and you can either hold it or just volley it first time into the goal, okay? Got it? Let's see how we do then, yeah? So that, hold on, hold on, sorry. Good ball. That's a good pass, but I want you to beat the defensive line. My demo is crap, so I've got a bad hand over it, okay? You've got, to, you've got to get it over the top. In disclaimer, we do not put the ball in the air, ever. And yet you all celebrate Van Persie's great goal. You all celebrate those great volleys, and yet you don't practice with the ball in the air, ever. How do you do? Remember? Over here, good. Let's see if we can do it again. Get away, go, 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 be assertive. You're playing for Juventus, you're playing against an Italian back 10 that's packing it in. You've got to make that breaking run. Let's see it. Good. Touch. He's not there. No, he's... Good ball, good ball, and we're in. Touch. Oh, fantastic. Good, good finish. Well done. Now, here's the thing this is what we're talking about recreating for you, okay? You guys get a quick drink. And then can we bring the goal up a little bit and we'll get everybody in uh, two teams, guys, okay? Chuck, you can be captain of one team and Izzy, you can be the captain of the other, okay? Very competitive, these two. We'll see how it is. Okay? Now, so we have Juventus there training and they play in a 3 5 team. They're the best team in Italy, so they know they're going to have the ball all the time. And he's got to break down the pace. Back three would be there, you've got the laterals, the wing backs. They are flying, breaking the line. You've got the strikers, fighting centre backs, occupying them and trying to break the line some of the time. You have Pirlo pulling strings, you have Pogba and Vidal breaking the line at once. Now I looked at that and these maps constantly look wow. That is very, very good. And like, I had Pirlo making the pass, that's probably good. But so they practice that and then you watch them playing through the year 
and you see these great goals with incredible ingenuity of God-given flair, you know, we practice, and they practice, and they don't half us, they practice, shout, he's on, shout, bang, 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 keep clock doing the same thing, bang, 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 okay, and they're doing that all the time, and then you saw Italy in the, uh, I'm trying to think which game, I showed that video, I can't remember now, Belgium, thank you, okay, and you see that dot. Now, granted, it was a centre back hitting the flip, but you watch that game. That is practice. You won't believe it, but it's practice. Even when you're looking at these little highlight clips all the time with Barcelona and all these great teams, they're practicing how to play. Now, obviously, they have certain little left hand guys that might be able to spice it up a little bit. I get that, okay? But until Messi gets to a higher like say P school, we might be, when I'm thinking of my vision of my program, we're thinking of the German national team, you know? We're talking about a machine that's well oiled and everybody knows what component they are. We're not thinking of a beautiful artist in the maybe like what Lionel Messi would do, okay? And so we practice and we work super hard. There's great coaches in the world that I've had this incredible opportunity to see. They do the same thing. Now here's the thing. If you go into the younger ages, I wouldn't spend all your time talking about that position. But can you put girls out there and get them doing these passes without them even knowing? They can follow their pass, and they can make some center back passes, they can make full back passes, they can make the wide passes. They can still be practicing all this. This is what they're going to do that, right? And as you get to older ages, you can start to give them more right there. Well, if you want to control the football from back in the day when everybody plays everywhere, I think that's really tough. Man, the football doesn't do it, so that's the thing that's done as much. You can become specialized in certain skills. But as we do this, the big hand team, you'll see us do our defending tomorrow. Um, very organized, not my defensive shape. People have their role, but what that does, it puts us into the position that we've just played from. Now, if you work on the half of some space, training every day, and then you let, let everybody wander all over the people, they might still recommend you that, but then people are doing totally different things. And so, I think you've got to pick your boys and you can't even go down to the job, you know? I'm not saying stifle play. John Reed uh, conversation, he talked about when he was playing for Guardiola, up until that final third, it was his job to get the team up into the final third, and then it was their job to finish it off in the final third. And he talked about, has any of you guys seen that interview? You guys, it's, it's awesome, isn't it? Really cool. It's brilliant. He said, yeah, I got a little bit bored playing out there, I wanted to go and join the front on the other side of the field. So off I went over, I scored a goal, and I thought everything was good. So what do you do? So that's something else. There you go. That's when we talk about keeping your way of doing things. If, if you can do that for a star player like my you can probably do that for your 15 year old who thinks that really is cool, right? Um, because remember, everybody needs and wants some sort of stuff in us, okay? We, we like to know what we put in. What sort of numbers do we have, guys? We have 10 and 10? That was a slow answer, wasn't it? Is that a tough question? So we have 11 to 10, or, we have, or are you playing? You want to fill in for them right now? Guys, you get an extra point if you can jump, okay? Stitch him up with the back. So what we're going to do, we're just playing this area, and we can do it at training sessions. If I've introduced a certain type of passing, then we're going to play, do five points for a goal, we'll do one point every time you replicate what you've worked on. That's pretty genius, that is it. Are they going to round up the course for that, maybe? Check this one Okay, but well, there you go. So anyway, we're just going to play now. And so, guys, can all the players hear me? Just wave your hand. Stand on one leg. Hop up and down. You didn't do it. You're a bloody keeper, aren't you? So anyway, you know, he wouldn't do it because they get their cool jersey, they get their own trainer. Who's a right back? Anybody? You show up to your right back coach every day? Oh, yeah, right. 
And now they want to take the most touches on the field. Not only do they get the jersey, the cool gloves, the special attention, their own coach, now they want to get the most touches on the field as well. It's all a conspiracy from goalkeeper coaches, whoever you are in the crowd, because you know you can make more money by training them even more. Because now not only do you have to make them jump in front of the ball, now you're getting to kick in extra time. Well, it's a genius. I knew I should have been a keeper coach. Anyway, I digress. So here we go. We'll start with it. We'll just start with the keepers, okay? What we'll do to begin with, try and make me look good. Are we listening, guys? Yeah, hand up. Oh, I know you're here. Yes, there we go. You'll make it forward eventually. Okay, we're not tackling, but you can block passes, okay? Sound fair? That includes you at the back in the black, young man, okay? There we go. Does that make sense, guys? So now it, and obviously we're not trying to make softies, we're just trying to see if we can do some of the things we did. Can we, guys, do what we just did? Otherwise, I don't get paid. Understand? That's not true. This is a plug now. What we did instead of getting paid for coming out here, we're giving all of you guys tickets to one of our home games. Okay. So please come out because you can come and look and you can criticize the crap out of us, but hopefully you'll see what we're just doing some of the time, you know? It is difficult when the other team's trying to stop you, obviously, but we try to do this. Okay, let's see how we do then, guys. I'll give them a good rest. He's just made the pass and he's just practicing. Where is that wide midfield? Yeah. <laughs> right midfielder, who are you? Where were you standing for the last hour? Where were you standing for the last hour? I'm really picking. You were over here, right? Come over here, I want to tell you something. Quick. Come over here, quick. Come stand over here. Just quick, run, run, run. run. That one there. That one there. It's his fault. There you go. We just wanted to get that. No, but here's the thing. We've just here's the thing though, guys. We've just practiced something, so we want to try and do it. Does that make sense? You're a good sport. I appreciate you. Uh, thank you for being a good sport. So look, play wide. I want you to get to here because he's just done what he's been doing. I want him to be able to do what he's been doing, and then he makes a decision. Okay. Now, if they start, because here's the thing. Now this is a good coaching point. You know we like our wingers to do that inside, right? I want to get over there. Now if he does that, who's going to get over there? Are you going to say him? That's up there, he's got to run further. Okay. What I'd like you to do is, that's a good spot, but I want you to do this. So you, you're in the team, not because you're a great defender, it's because you can beat people, put it across this shoot, score goal. My workhorse in midfield, he's going to get right where you stand. Does that make sense, everyone? Is that fair? Off we go, I'll shut up and let them play, because we've never seen it patient. Yep, good. There's a point, good, we're 1-0 up, well done. Good job, Biden. Actually, that wasn't one, we're going the wrong way, aren't we? There we go. Right, we're going to go over here, right? Yeah. Back, four, back, shoot, shoot, shoot! You see, his first instinct was to pass. That's your guy's fault. Shame on you. He was 18 yards out and he's wanting to pass sideways. The first thing he should want to do is score. If he cannot shoot, then he looks for a teammate, right? It's actually my fault today, but I'll blame you. All from there, keeper, let's go, come on, quick, quick, quick. Keeper, turn around. Good. Make one of the passes. It's cut off. There we go, good. Well opened out, good. Where's your center meeting? In and out. Oh. And they found a way of going backwards. You see that? He had his chance to pass forward, and he went backwards. Good. And face, face, face. Come on, keeper, do some work. Run. Yes, good, one a corner, good. Okay, you get the ball again, you want a corner. Quick, let's go. Open it out, back four, come quick. Bandy pass, good. Where's your center mini? 
You can come and criticise me telling me we're playing the ball wrong, but I'm telling you we're playing for strength and for those people. With strikers, we play with two strikers. We've got one of our strikers now, Amir, who's a local boy. He's not a big, strong, quick forward. I think I can have him in the 20 minutes quick, believe it or not. Um, but he will drop in. So the patterns have worked with him, he's much more of a ringy type player in those positions. And so the patterns have evolved based on the players you have. We had Rav Vinter, who was an all-star last year. You know, he played West before even going pro. Okay? He's a marauding left back. There's no way he can stay at home. And we had Corey Baird, who was a number 10 by trade. So I told him that he was a number 10 on the left. Because he would have the ball on his feet and Brandon would fly forward. This year, when we have a winger who's quick and lively, and a fullback who built more like a centre back than a fullback, we do the patterns different. Does that make sense? So they're always going to evolve. You're going to have ideas, but you have to be cognizant of the players you're working with. I can talk philosophy while we're watching, you know. This is the thing, see, I, I love how Barcelona play. I think it's made my job easier in some ways, guys. Because so many people are trying to copy Barcelona, and I don't think they have to do it in a competitive manner. That's my opinion. I'm not saying I'm right. Other questions while we're out here, guys? Yes, sir, man. Excuse me? As far as resistance, no. As far as people defending the ball, no. So, again, if you think of how you practice your sessions, you go with no pressure, learn a skill set with the least amount of pressure possible. So all they have to focus is on is the technical abilities of how to pass the ball. And then what we'll do, we will structure our session, we'll work on the different things that we want to work on, concept, patterns or whichever, and then we build it up into a more competitive situation. And so, you know, the thing with practice play, it ingrains knowing where you need to be on the field, so it's a tactical type of thing, which is way better than on a clipboard. You know, if you stand your guys and say, do this, and point to the board, they won't learn it as much. You practice, 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 it's gonna get ingrained, you know? That spin that Jordan did, like the whole of York, he'd done it hundreds of times in training, it was just ingrained. You didn't need a defender there to get it ingrained, but once it's become ingrained, then you add defenders. So yes, you can do it. You know, I can even explain, this is actually a cool one, this is what Liverpool did, guys. They had a, a square in the middle of the field that was about, about 50 by 30, and they had their shape, they had the back four, Two centre backs outside of the square at one end, right back, left back on the side of the square, left winger, right winger outside of the square, you still with me? Striker outside of the square at the top, and the three central players in the square. Okay? And then they had five players on the other team inside the square. And so all it was was practicing the patterns of play with a five. Every time they had the ball, they're backing out and opening. Every time they lost it, boom, in they went. And you know what's really insane? I watched one game and I saw exactly what they did. They gave the ball away and you literally saw it on a picture, a tight shape, and they all just collapsed onto the ball immediately. And so that's that adding that pressure with the pattern. But again, it's him teaching the instincts that he wants. We're opening out a bit. The moment you lose the ball, you go into the square and you win it back. And you try and go again with the direction heading forward. Don't kick him, Chuck. He's only a young lad. Come on. Other questions, guys, while we're at it? Yeah? Yep, the, the question is, um, how would you set up those runs if you're playing with three up front instead of two up front? I have no idea. No, just kidding. Um, again, you can, you can look at that and you can think of as your wide players, 
Here would be my argument. Do you know the why players keep getting asked to go inside and under? How are they going to get to the far front? They're going to have to sprint a long way if you expect to win the fullback. So you can, you can design those patterns. I'm sure other coaches here will, be, will have great articles on patterns to play by the 4 3 3 system. But with that, depending on you know, who your number 10 is in that shape, can the number 10 be combining just like two strikers with the wingers not involved? Or do the far post wingers get involved in front of goal as well? So that again, though, would come back to their starting positions and where they're playing on the field, where they can join in that way. But we go on that. And so with that, though, Here's where I say, if you want your winger to get an inside and under, you can't expect him to be finishing at the far top. So you have to decide what's happening there, you know. And again, I get it guys, I'm not stupid. Wonderful interchange in soccer where they have perfect instincts to fill in all around each other is awesome. That's what you get when you take the best players in the world, they play together for years at Barcelona and they can do that. That is awesome. I'm saying, within a cycle where we lose players every year, that's not going to happen in the program as well, you know. There'll be lots of coaches that, look at that, that was almost a call in York there. Did you see that? Did anybody actually see that almost came off? Be honest. Shame on you guys. Okay. Other questions, guys? Well, let me take a couple more minutes. And de depending on the format of what we're doing, am I stopping the game and, and pointing things out? What I would be doing is certainly really encouraging what we've been practicing. Really encouraging them to move. I'm not doing a very good job coaching right now, but I'm here talking to you guys. You see, like, the far side left wheel there, he's down wide. Once the ball goes over to the right side, he should be tracking the side of the yard and he should be tracking the back of the car as well. Good talk about that. Other questions right now, guys? Yes. Okay, yeah, it's similar to the other question, that there won't be the passive opponent. What you can do with that, real simple for like the pullback, you can be coaching it and stand inside and move towards them, the obvious pass is the wide field. Then you move on to the pattern of the in and out or something, you just stand in front of them and go towards them. Now if they kick it at you, they're not thinking, they have to do that. So you can add some players, you can take the other players who aren't involved in the patterns to do the passive defender. Um, and so you can do that. And then even in this, they're not supposed to be tackling originally. And then there's one time tackling all the time up. What will happen, guys, you'll create some rules, and then nature will take over as a player, which I think is normal. So, even in a session, I'll say, okay, we're not tackling right now. Five minutes, I'll be remembering. Then they're going all out and doing things. I'll let them progress naturally. Because again, if, if we ask things to do that are really artificial, it's not helping us. It's if their brain doesn't switch with it, so, but you can definitely have passive people as coaches. Even when you're doing the under 10th block, you start the drill off, you pass it at the centre back and run towards it. He should control it, pass it around the block. You run it in there a little bit, he'll play it up like you're going to put it through the front. Another question here, guys? Your, your training schedule, some of it's to do with actual intensity of training, 
But also, if we do patterns of play, apart from running into the mannequin, they hopefully won't hurt themselves. And so, like the day before a game, we can get them tuned in with some defensive shape stuff, where they're doing what they do, and then we can go through packs of play with them. And here's the thing, guys, we had this conversation inside about how you change the tactics. All of these things, the scenario is based on how the opponent looks at that point in time. As we're going through the week, we're saying, I think they're going to pack it in. So let's work on bouncing it, switching it, and really get the full back to join in. Huh? If we're thinking they're going to be in our face with high forwards, we say the centre back and have a look at the players and have a look at the players. So we'll have a look at the attack preparation and attack the next level. Because again, as much as we like to say, okay, we're going to trade them off the field, we're going to tell them to do it, they'll go do it. That's really not fair. You guys will have your other profession to do it. It took years to get better than that. And then we come up with tactics, we figure out late at night, we scribble it on a napkin, and then we complain when they don't they don't do what we ask. Top you! Well it's really obvious to hear. Really good. That's why we want to keep it as simplistic as possible. And so they'll execute what we do really, really well. I'm not claiming to be a genius of tactics, I'm claiming to be sensible with them where the tactics will be executed better than other people. Uh, one more question, guys, and I think you guys have heard yourself. Yep. Yes. So, yes, but the question kind of has this evolved in how we play? Most definitely, and didn't it always go that way. I've approached every different system of play with different stuff. Um, I had a mentor who was a youth coach at Arsenal, uh, and that was when they were the Invincibles, and they were in four four two shape. So I took an awful lot of his ideas and plagiarized them, and I got to of coach those ideas. And then with each type of player I've had, and each type of way where we've been, the things have evolved and changed. And I think the cycle has gone through, if I went to Sharp, who were 150 from the country, we were going to do a lot of defending. We were very packed and tight. The counter attack and in back through play was everywhere. <laughs> on the break. Now, as we got better, the team sat off us, the sensible slow building became more important. So the same thing happened at Stanford when going up against the big dogs originally. Tight, solid, sharp counter in back through, boom, 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 boom. and then as we got better and better on the ball, the emphasis is not just a bit more, and so the emphasis on what we're playing, the emphasis on the session, and so the game is good enough. Anybody else? One more. I've not, I've not heard the gong yet, so we keep talking. Yep. Yep. Oh, they just, you know what, I'll find it. They move the ball. Right in there. But they're still starting from the centre back, but the only difference is the field now, because of the distance, is probably about 18 yards longer. The big thing. Oh, not, well, no, they'd be, yeah, and so that's because we're already pinned in. Yeah, okay, I understand the question now. So they have to start here, and so there's going to be build-up play. What will happen is when you're playing on a big field, you're going to have to run more. Simple as that. Now, as we're doing the pack for play, we're going to make it easier on them so they can focus on the finishing up front. That, that's a good question. I didn't understand it at the beginning. And then also, what we will do with our pattern work We'll start off from the keeper and goal kicks, and we'll do that with back four guys just working. The front six guys will be in the final third. Some sessions we'll do build-up play from the back. So here's the thing, guys. If you're doing build-up and you're working on that perfect building out by defenders, send the strikers somewhere else and get them to work on what they need to be good at, you know. Because you can teach them a little bit of movement, I, I, I do feel that, I understand that we want finesse, we want ability on the ball, I get that. We have to understand, we have to allow strikers to practice shooting. 
Developing their, their development. He now the game stopped because they're uh, dribbling. Who's that guy over there? Okay. Um, but once you get to our stage, you want to be successful. You want to be good at them. And here's a, a little fun fact for you. Two years ago, we had five out. And we're going to say, we'll have a heavyweight boxing match with the outcome. Okay. This last year, we graduated now five senior starters of the horses. Four of them went close, incredible, and we didn't have quite the same firepower. So when we looked at it, we said, okay, we're going to have to find some gold extras somewhere, and that would end up coming to set pieces. So last year, we worked on set pieces more, and it, it got us to the corner, you know? Yeah, they're good. Can you all jog in over here, please, guys? Let's jog in, come on. Now again, culture guys, if I say jog in and say walk, I'm going to have a go at it. That's my play. Okay? Culture. In you come, quick, 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 last one in! Okay, can we just turn for the audience? You guys have been absolutely fantastic guys, apart from people. Let's give them a big round, come on, give them a loud round of applause guys, come on. Um, I'm not sure who ties us up now, but we're going to spend it. You guys have made yourself a drink, absolutely magnificent. We put you on the spot today and you did amazing. Thank you so much. Hopefully you've got some different ideas. Again, as you go to working with all these different coaches, what I'd say to the coaches to explain to you and to you guys, there isn't a right way. You're going to play for one coach who's going to ask you to do something in a certain way. You should do it that way. Then you go to another coach, they might ask you to do something different again. You should do it that way. The reason why is because you guys are two players and two sports. Your role has to fit into that jigsaw puzzle of the team. And if you long for a different shaped piece from another team, it's not going to fit into that. So what you guys did today, I know you're playing a different shape than you used to. Some different ideas. And you did fantastic. So good job doing all that. Okay, good evening. Okay? Now, if you guys bring yourself, you get a, a drink, I think a five hundred dollar check each, and some, some Nike shoes and Adidas shoes, whatever you want. They're all over there behind the tent, okay? They don't really have it. Any, any other things? Do we just wrap up now, guys? Yeah. Listen, if I could just say just a couple of things to the coach, because I don't have to do the things so. Okay, just a quick soapbox for, for one minute, you guys, and then get talking what you want, okay? I, I really appreciate you coming out here and being attentive with it. I know it's, it's, a, it's a long session, we're going through a lot of things there, okay? Uh, you know, you're part of a, a wonderful fraternity, it's certainly created my life. I've, I've got to stage in 89, I started club coaching the very next day. So the ASO this big, high school, boys, boys, all the way across. 
It's an awesome job you do, and it's something that I, I don't think you would get enough credit for everything you do. I would I'd give you two pieces of advice, really. If you do this job, you will not make everybody happy. You've probably figured that out already. You will have parents who know a thousand times more about soccer than you. I used to, I'm a confident guy, I used to stand toe to toe with the parents and fight them, not physically, they want to fight me. Okay? But I'd fight them, try to explain that I'm really smart and I know the answer. Uh, they should shut up. Okay? Now, I don't tell them I'm smart, I don't tell them I have the answer, I just tell them to shut up. Okay? It's a great part of it. Okay? So, but what you have to do, you have to convince everybody. They sign up to your club, to your logo. This is how you do it. And if they all work towards that, it's better for everyone. I say, if you can know way more than I know about the game, that's okay. But while your son or daughter is playing in our group, this is how we're going to do it, and it's unfair to your child to ask them to do this thing. If they're going to get confused, and they're not going to get much out So, if you can, figure out what you're trying to do, do it to the best of your ability, and then politely, I think you'll to shut up and kind of get away with it. Right? But what you can do though, you can say to you can stand there and say, look, I wouldn't talk about inside, here's how we're doing things, this is what we're going to do. And you know what, your ideas are great, but we're not going to do them with this group. And when they move on to somebody else, they can practice those ideas and different things like that. Right? Create some time, create some time, and you're organizing a group. Just think of a boss.